Arnold, we've got a problem. Trash, wars, people listening to motivational podcasts at two times speed. Yeah, the planet is clearly exhausted. We're sending you to look for a new home for humanity. Think of it as a vacation, except you can't come back. Mars. Oh, please. That's mainstream now, Arnie. It's packed with colonists. Elon sold out all the seats. And everyone's been politely coughing red dust for years. So no Mars. We turn around and fly somewhere where things escalate much faster. First candidate, Venus. Technically Earth's twin. If Earth were a clothes iron left on max heat. Venus's atmosphere is a lovely cocktail of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid, a perfect blend, unless you're human and not, say, stainless steel. The pressure here is about 90 times higher than on Earth. It's like a massage by an elephant. Actually, by 90 elephants, a flat life form named Arnold moves on. Next stop, Io, Jupiter's volcanic moon. The surface literally rips apart from tidal forces, and lava fountains shoot higher than Everest. Just look at that. Average temperature, minus 130 degrees Celsius. Near the volcanoes, around 1,600 degrees Celsius. Can't decide what to wear today, buddy? Doesn't matter. Jupiter's radiation will mutate you anyway, and clothes won't be part of the new you. Moving on. Let me tell you about exoplanets instead. They're outside our solar system. So let's visit the closest one, Proxima b. Because of tidal locking with its red dwarf, one side of this planet is eternally roasting under endless daylight, never seeing a single night. And the other is permanently suffering from darkness and outrageously overpriced motel rooms. You'd survive only underground, in a bunker, eating only canned food. That's not a lifestyle. That's a punishment with extra steps. Your daily game would be just, try not to lose your mind today. So maybe it makes more sense not to run away to some rock four light years away, but finally stop destroying your own home planet. But while you were flying around looking for a new one, some things have already changed. That's not the bright future people are thinking about. Indeed, by 2050, the Earth is suffering from global warming. The planet's population has grown to over 10 billion people. This overpopulation has caused a shortage of fresh water. Can you imagine? The planet is on the brink of destruction and they're fighting over Pepsi. All right, back to our mission. In 2050, everyone has cybernetic implants. And since enemy drones can detect implants at a distance of 10 kilometers, you, Arnold, are the most undetectable and invulnerable person in 2050. You are the one who will help change the course of the war. Soldiers assemble. And so, Arnold, the enemy has been spotted in the north, but the way is blocked by electromagnetic guns. Instead of projectiles, they fire electrical impulses, and the impulse speed exceeds 7,000 kilometers an hour. We have to find shelter. Quick, go down into the subway. You escape the guns, Arnold, but there are other problems now. Drones detected by scanners. And don't worry, Arnold, remember, these drones won't even notice you. You just need to rush past them and turn off the power. Well done, Arnold. The future sure wasn't ready for the likes of you. Keep going, buddy. You're almost there. It's time to get to the surface. Arnold, there are a lot of enemies around. Get into the exosuit. With it, you can become a super soldier and travel long distances without getting tired. And all physical activity becomes 20 times easier than it was before. You're unstoppable now, Arnold. Now you just need to figure out the controls. Huh? Arnold, no! You just killed yourself from the future. Okay, well, no time to grieve. Your enemies are coming. You have a flamethrower. Use it. Oh, yeah. No one ever thought that one day this would happen in Hollywood. <laughs> Arnold, look out! A rocket! 
Arnold! Arnold! Are you ready to live for a thousand years? A little injection first. So let's talk first about what you would have to offer mankind with this thousand year life. Nothing, except for maybe 230 kilograms of skin, which your body continuously grows and could eventually cover one and a half football fields. And then there's all the hair you'd grow, the length of which will be equal to the height of 10 Statues of Liberty. This is perhaps about the best you could offer. But don't worry, there's another benefit. For the past 100 years, the average person's height has increased 8 centimeters, which is mostly explained by medical advances. So what if you continue growing for your whole life? By the end of the experiment, you'd be 80 meters tall. Well, now you really are a completely ridiculous creature. But no, even for you, Arnie, it's too much. Much of the complexity of longevity lies in the inability of organs to withstand the burdens of operating for more than 100 or 200 years. Your joints would eventually begin to break down under their own weight and stress. Fortunately, robotic organs will appear on the scene. There, that's better. But is it possible to replace all the various parts of a body? Unfortunately, no. There are limits with your brain, of course. Arnold's memory is capable of holding 2.5 petabytes of information. This is equivalent to the content of all the photos on Facebook, plus 20 million archive boxes packed full of documents. This may seem like a huge number, but eventually, in 300 years, your memory would be full. Since Arnie will become the oldest person on the planet, he'll soon be famous. But he won't be able to put two words together due to his full memory. So, your body really isn't intended for such a long life, Arnie. Do you know what the best thing you can do for humanity is? Wean them of yourself. You've just traveled 3 billion years back in time. Only unicellular organisms live during this era. No pain, no humiliation. So Arnold, you happy now? On second thought, to be honest, I'm worried for humankind if you should somehow become its founding father. Ah, uh, how's this for a change? Earth, 2020, and you're now the happiest human alive. Because you're the only human alive. Everyone else on the planet disintegrated when a dark matter experiment went awry. What are your plans, Arnold? Hey, where are you going? I wonder how long you can survive. With no one to work at power plants, there's no more electricity. And that means no heat, no fridge, and no clean water. Maybe you should look up some survival tips on the internet. Oh, wait, there's no internet anymore. You're just going to have to figure out how to survive on your own. Water. Bottled water has a shelf life of about two years, and you can sterilize river water with strong alcohol. What about food? The only food products with an unlimited shelf life are rice, powdered milk, and honey. And to be honest, I think it's unlikely you're ever going to master the art of hunting. To diversify your diet, you're going to have to move to Mexico. It's warmer there and you can take up farming. You're also going to need to acquire some medical skills so you don't die the first time you cut yourself. And even after solving all these basic survival issues, you'll have to try not to lose your mind from the absolute and unrelenting loneliness. Well, looks like you made it, Arnold. Alone and without all those pesky people who produce foodstuffs, build houses, manage water treatment facilities, monitor sensors at nuclear power plants, and control space stations. It's time for the third button, Arnold. And you've still got two fingers left to press it. I believe in you, man. Press the button. Oh, wow, Arnold, you survived. Pretty much like all the other lowest forms of life, like microbes. But now there is a small issue with water. After a meteor 100 kilometers in diameter hit the Earth, the shockwave destroyed almost all life within a radius of 100,000 square kilometers. There was a huge release of sulfur, and dust and ash from all the destruction rose into the upper atmosphere and blocked access from the sun's mm. rays. You must be hungry. It's good that you kept your space food in the rocket. There wasn't any food. That's terrible, because there's no food left on Earth. It's good that you're in a spacesuit, since it's minus 50 degrees outside, and you don't want to walk here for very long. Watch out! I forgot to add that cockroaches have also survived, and they've mutated just a wee little bit. You better run to infinity and beyond! Arnold, how in blazes did you get yourself into such a state? One fine day, which didn't portend disaster at all, Arnold got locked up in a hypermarket until the end of his days. You may ask why, and the answer is just because. I simply wanted to lock him up in a hypermarket. 
Here, you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long. And you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little longer maybe 36 hours if you're lucky you could try to prepare you could salt the fish and dry the bread then their shelf lives will be extended by years but hey seize the day right Arnold after a week vegetables and fruits will also go bad and you'll have to switch to cereals but even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years you could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years. And then the last remaining source of food will be... Many things can be used for other purposes. For example, you can wipe your bum with just about any kind of paper. You just need to crumple it up thoroughly and, well, use it. Just like our great-great-grannies did. And when you run out of cash, you can always use the card. It's not a good morning, Arnold. Do you remember what day it is today? Well, of course, today is Apocalypse Day. A volcano has already erupted. Then next, we get a tsunami. And to top it off, we got a big-ass meteor coming. The eruption of a supervolcano is an excellent example of a possible apocalypse that our ancestors already experienced. For example, the eruption of the Toba volcano 50,000 years ago reduced the human population to just 3,500. And it also brought closer the onset of an ice age. You seem so calm, Arnie. As if you already have a solution. Arnold, you're prepared. I'm so proud of you. A hot air balloon. Seriously? Wait, did you make it yourself? Yeah, looks like you did. Are you sure you really need all this stuff? Or did you just take the TV as ballast? Well, let's go. You're not the first to make a balloon with your own hands. Larry Walters attached weather balloons to a chair and launched himself into the sky, almost to five kilometers. The result of his flight was a $1,500 ticket, a record altitude for a flight on a cluster of balloons, and, of course, Darwin Award. Surviving the apocalypse at cloud level is a great option. You can't be touched by a tsunami or an earthquake. But look, there's a meteor. Due to friction, its temperature is now over 1,500 degrees Celsius. Real hot air balloons are made from fireproof fabric. Remind me, Arnold, what did you use? Oh, you think that's it? Behold, the rain of meteor debris. So, uh, Arnie, how long do you think it can keep going? The first non-stop around-the-world balloon trip was completed by Picard and Jones on March 1, 1999. They landed in Egypt after a flight of 41,000 kilometers, lasting almost 20 days. Congratulations, Arnold! You survived the apocalypse. True, all the rest of civilization is destroyed. The only survivors are you, cockroaches, and promoters. They'll certainly survive any apocalypse.